In this lesson, we'll look at an example on how to find the minimum velocity to remain in loop. This is a centripetal force energy type problem. The question reads, a glider pilot wishing to fly in a vertical loop dives to attain a speed sufficient to keep the glider from falling out of the top of the loop. What is the minimum entry speed for a 200 meter radius loop? Let's take a look at an illustration. So here we have a glider plane These are its wings, and that's the wing further out. It is taking a nose dive so that eventually it can go into a loop that is 200 meters in radius and come out without falling out of this loop. Now that we have an idea of what's happening, in order for this glider plane to remain in loop, specifically when it's at the top, the centripetal force must equal to the force due to gravity. Let me write that relationship down for you. Remember, force is calculated by taking the mass times acceleration. And for centripetal force, which is the force that is acting downwards towards the center, that's calculated by taking the mass times v to the power of 2 over r. So in place of a, we have v to the power of 2 over r. And that must equal to the force due to gravity. That's represented as m times g, g being 9.8 meters per second squared. By isolating for v, this equation will help us determine the minimum velocity at the top to allow this plane to remain in loop. So I'll solve for v by canceling out m on both sides. We have a factor of m, so they divide out. Multiplying both sides by r afterwards gives us v to the power of 2 is equal to g times r. And then square rooting both sides gives us v is equal to the square root of g times r. So this is the velocity of the airplane at the top of the loop that needs to be maintained in order for this loop to exist. And I'll write this down as vt for the velocity at the top. Now another thing to consider in order to answer this question, since they're asking for the entry speed, not the speed at the top, is you have to consider the kinetic energy at the very bottom. The kinetic energy of the airplane at the bottom needs to go into two things in order for this loop to exist. It needs to go into the potential energy required to reach the top, and whatever is left over, that energy goes into completing the loop. To represent that mathematically, we can write down the kinetic energy at the bottom goes into the potential energy required to get to the top, plus the kinetic energy at the top to complete the loop loop. The formula for kinetic energy, as we've learned in the past, is half times mass v to the power of 2. And since it's the kinetic energy at the bottom, this v will be represented as the entry speed. Potential energy is calculated by taking the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height that exists here. And the height that exists is from here to here. That's the diameter, or in other words, two times the radius. So replacing what we know into this generic formula, we have half times the mass, the entry speed raised to the power of two is equal to the potential energy represented by this expression, plus the kinetic energy at the top. We'll use the same formula, but instead I'll write down V at the top raised to the power of two. And just to be consistent, let's use capital T because I'll be replacing this expression into there. All right. From here, you can start to see that we can solve for VE and get the answer. Let's go ahead and solve for VE. We have the mass times gravity times 2 times R plus half the mass of the airplane times the velocity. So the square root of gr raised to the power of 2, the square root and the power of 2 will cancel each other out, leaving us only with gr. I'll show that in a moment. And we will divide both sides by these two factors, half m. So dividing both sides by half m gives us on the left side the entry speed raised to the power of 2. At this point, you're probably wondering, what are we going to do with these two factors of m? We don't know the mass of the airplane. Well. You can factor out an m since we have two terms here. 
and m is a common factor. So by factoring out an m, where we have m bracket and the rest of the expression, this factor m and this factor m will cancel each other out. So the mass is not even important here. Let's fill in 9.8 times 2 times the radius of 200. So that takes care of that first part. Plus, and instead of half, I'll write down 0 0.5. It's easier to work with. The square root and the 2 will cancel each other out. And we have 9.8 times the radius of 200 all over 0 0.5. At the conclusion of finding out what this is, we'll square root both sides. So let me just show you really quickly. We have 9.8 times 2 times 200 plus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 200. That's the top numerator. We'll divide that by 0 0.5. Gives us 9,800. And then we square root that value to get 98.99 or simply 99 meters per second is the entry speed for this glider plane to remain in loop all throughout. And there you have it. That is how to combine centripetal force and energy related problems to find the minimum velocity to remain in loop.